Greetings, book lovers everywhere. I'm E-Train and welcome to E-Train Talks, where I talk everything books and kindness to ensure that no books or kids are left behind. And I am thrilled to be talking to Dan Rubens, an educator, writer, and composer, as well as the co-founder of Hear Your Song, an amazing nonprofit organization that empowers children and teens with serious illnesses and complex health needs to make their voices heard through collaborative songwriting. Dan believes in the power of kids' voices and stories, and he co-founded Hear Your Song as a sophomore at Yale University, where he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in, ed in English and Education Studies. Dan and everyone involved with the Hear Your Song nonprofit, they're dream makers and spreaders of joy. I'm just so inspired by everything Hear Your Song is doing to spread kindness to the lives of kids and teens who need it the most. And I'm grateful Dan is here today to share the story behind the Hear Your Song journey. And without further ado, thank you so much for joining me today, Dan. Thank you so much, E-Train. That was a beautiful intro, and I'm so honored to be here. I'm a big fan. Well, I'm a big fan of everything that you're doing, and let's get into the first question. Great. So will you, will you share the inspiration for starting Hear Your Song? And as your nonprofit grows, do you have any future plans for empowering more kids with serious illnesses and complex health needs? Yeah, so it all started back when I was in fifth grade, actually. Um, my fifth grade teacher had our class become buddies with kids at a local pediatric residence for um, who were mainly kids with really serious uh, medical conditions who were going to basically like live in that residence until they got too old to stay there anymore. So we were buddies um, for the whole school year with them. And my buddy was a girl named Melissa who was nonverbal. Um, so I had to learn to get to know her and communicate with her um, in different ways than I was used to making friends. But it was really this amazing year of just getting to know kids who I might have at first glance thought were too different than me or like wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to make friends with and really get to know them as like full human beings and and peers, right? Um, and so that had a big impact on me. And then when I went to college, um, I was really frustrated by how I was a composer and musician and I was frustrated by how there was so much competition at college where there were like different opportunities, different classes, different programs that only like a certain number of musicians could get into. And I was looking for ways to sort of bring musicians on campus together in collaborative ways. So we weren't like fighting over spots, but sh sort of sharing the best of what we all had to offer. Um, so I thought sort of back to that time and came up with this idea of working with kids who have serious illnesses, who are in the hospital or who are at home uh, recovering um, or in treatment. Um, or with chronic illnesses and helping them tell their stories through songs about anything they wanted to, and then having this community of musicians who could help them kind of realize their musical vision. Um, so we did that in college until I graduated and then other people took over. I became a fourth grade teacher. And then at the start of the pandemic, two years ago, two and a half years ago now, um, my co-founder Rebecca and I realized like this was the moment where kids really needed to have their stories told and their voices heard. So we decided to start expanding. And because everything was virtual, we could reach kids kind of anywhere in the world. Um, and musicians were looking for things to do because they had lost all of their opportunities to collaborate and uh, and make music together. Um, so it really took off from there. And we started new partnerships and reaching kids kind of all over the world by now. Um, so we've worked with almost 300 kids writing their own wow. songs um, in 27 states and six countries. Um, and if and the songs are really about everything from, I say, living with epilepsy to loving pasta. Uh, so it's really whatever kids want to share about themselves. The next question that I'm going to ask is, I feel that I just feel so much hope seeing the smiles on the kids' faces after hearing their lyrics sung by Broadway performers and knowing, wow, I wrote that. It just must feel really, really just incredible being the source of such joy. And I'm sure everyone listening would like to know more about how your songs go from an idea to an actual performance. So what's the process like? Yeah, that's a great question. And the answer is it really depends on the kid and every song is different. We say that we have a kid driven process, which means that every part of the songwriting is up to every kid or teen writing their song. So what the song is about, every word, is going to be exactly as the kid writes it, whether they want the song to rhyme or not, whether they want to have like a verse chorus structure or some other kind of song structure, what instruments they want, um, 
And then whether they write the music themselves or collaborate on the music with one of our volunteers, whether they record their own vocals or have someone else record their vocals. Some kids who write songs with us even like write their own piano part and play on that or like mix their own track and do their own audio production. Um, so the way that it starts out is we do a songwriting session that's usually about 60 to 90 minutes where we help kids write the lyrics, first of all, and then come up with what musical ideas they want. If there's a song they want it to sound like, we might listen to that together. Then we might explore on an instrument some ideas for melody. Um, and we really usually try to leave that session with a clear idea of what they want to write about. And then we have tend to have follow up sessions where we go more into the music side of things if they want or recording their own vocals. And then whatever else is left over for our we have like 300 ish volunteers who are composers and musicians and lyric video makers. So they'll do all of the other pieces to help bring the songs to life. So if a kid says, I want bagpipes and a cello, we'll get a bagpipe player, <laughs> a bag piper and a cellist uh, to make that happen. And then we'll put that all together. Sometimes the songwriters will be back on for, to give feedback as we develop it. And then uh, we'll make a lyric video and post it on YouTube and sometimes on Spotify and other streaming platforms. And then the goal is really to share it with the world and have as many people celebrate it as we can. So like what you mentioned, we recently had a concert where a bunch of Broadway performers sang with kids and sang songs that kids had written. And it was really an amazing opportunity uh, to really just get to have the songs performed by people who are like the highest level of performance too. So that was a lot of fun. So what are some ways that the writing community can get involved and help support your cause? Yeah, so I think the number one way that people can get involved is to listen to the song. So uh, you can go to um, our YouTube channel, you can go to social media. Uh, so at Hear Song HYS is our Instagram, our Facebook, our Twitter, our TikTok, um, and our, you can go to our website, www.hearyoursong.org, um, and really uh, just help us celebrate the kids' songs and voices um, and kids' incredible imaginations. Um, because it really makes a big difference, as I'm sure you know, as a performer, right? And as a as a YouTuber and reviewer, when people let you know that they love what you're doing. Um, so we're trying to give a platform for kids who often don't get a lot of praise for their creativity. They're so much of their lives are often like built around their illnesses and people see them sort of first and foremost, sometimes as like uh, people with, with medical needs. Um, so it's amazing when they can be sort of celebrated for their creativity and their imagination, right? Um, so that's number one. Number two is if you would like to support us helping our ability to continue giving all of this programming to kids for free, we don't charge anything for our songwriting sessions. It's completely free of charge. Um, you can donate on our website. There's a big red button on all the pages, um, hearyoursong.org, and that goes a long way to helping us make our programs grow. And of course, if people want to volunteer to help lead songwriting sessions, you don't even need to be a composer. You can be an amazing poet or an amazing writer who just wants to help kids express themselves. So if there are writers out there who think this sounds really cool and want to get involved, either sharing songs with other people or by helping lead sessions, we'd love to hear from you too. And my next question is, so it's also a bit of a statement at the start. So I love the music ever since I was really little. I started singing Beatles songs and I was just two and a half and rocking out in the hallway um, into a mirror, like singing and watching myself in a mirror. And so many songs have really made an impact on my life. And I'm wondering if you had to choose one song, one song only to listen to forever, what would it be? This is such a hard question. Um, so when I was a fourth grade teacher and a fifth grade teacher, um, I would make all my students at the beginning of the year fill out a playlist where they'd come up with like eight songs in different categories. So like a song that was really important to them because of a person in their life, a song that was really important to them because it reminded them of a particular like moment in their lives, etc. So I'm used to dividing this answer into like eight pieces. So I'm trying to pick what my actual number one was. The one that's coming to mind, do you know James Taylor's music at all? So there's a James Taylor song called On the Fourth of July, which I really have loved since I was a kid. And I like associate it with my family and my cousin um, and my parents. So I feel like maybe that one just it makes me like feel really warm inside when I listen to it. So 
So I think I'm, I'm going to go with that one, but there could be lots of answers. And I'm not going to choose a hear your song song because I don't want to pick favorites because it's like they're all my children, all 250 songs. Uh, so yeah, what would your answer be? My answer, that's a good question. Um, so one song that's really made an impact on me throughout my entire life, like, so I never really get old, of the, like the Beatles never get old. Um, and my mom always sang to me when I was a baby. She always sang um, Golden Slumbers to me. And I think that that's really a song that's carried through my life. It's always popped up at certain moments. So I think Golden Slumbers by the Beatles. Yes, I cool. like old music. Um, <laughs> I always like to rock out to 80s music as well. Um, I like those guitarists and just... <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and... So yeah, that's a song that's really made an impact on me. I know that there are so many out there um, and there are new songs being created every day. And this uh, one thing that I really love about this question is that your answer can really vary from day to day. Like that's true. one day, this so like a song might really, you might like, for instance, you're sad, you might need to listen to a sad song or an uplifting song. And then yeah. the next day you might be in an entirely different mood yeah. and you want to listen to a different song. So that's that's probably why I asked the question like because yeah. it's just such an important question also really it's kind of puts it into perspective in a sense all right I don't know what I'm saying I'm complimenting myself it's supposed to be about you <laughs> um, <laughs> well I think maybe you want to then pick one of those really long Beatles songs that have like lots of different different sections so you can have a good mood for every for every <laughs> yeah emotion that you're feeling yeah with lots of parts of it mm -hmm. and so I bet that there are people listening or watching who just love what you're doing for kids. I know I do, and I'm not biased at all. It's, I'm it's also just really inspiring what you're doing. Um, and I'm not just saying that because you're on my podcast, right? Now. <laughs> I really do mean it. So what can like d different composers or what can just we all do to make a difference in helping hear your song, continue making dreams musical dreams come true. Yeah, so like I said, one way is volunteering. So if you're a composer or a musician, you can get involved. Even if you don't wanna work with kids, if you're like, eh, I don't wanna work with kids, you can just perceive the ideas that kids create after we've worked with them and help uh, write the, like compose some of the music if kids haven't done that themselves or like make the, like produce the tracks or play instruments on them. So if the kid wants flag pipe, you can do that. Um, and you can lead sessions with kids. Uh, I, and I think really just like sharing songs, right? So if you have a favorite song, I mean, you mentioned like a one about your dog, like a funny one about a dog, which could have been like 10 different hear your song songs. I don't know. <laughs> like that could have been any of them. That could be like half the songs. Um, so if you have a favorite song, like sharing it with friends. And actually, if there are kids who are watching this too, um, we love when kids share with other kids, right? Because some people like the songs because it's emotional to them because they know that some of the kids who are writing them are going through hard things. But lots of times people are just like, this is a hilarious song. I'm going to share this with my friends. So if you have a favorite song, uh, definitely like share it with your friends um, and let people know about the YouTube channel and that the songs are out there because some of the songs are just like a lot of fun to listen to without any knowledge of sort of the organization, just like they're great songs. Yeah. Um, so we'd love more people to just check them out. Yeah, I feel like that's really important. Like not just watching the songs because the kids might be going through a hard time, but also just loving the songs and yeah. like forgetting all your worries and just grooving to a silly song like Sherlock is Ridiculous. Oh yeah, that's a new that, one. That's yeah, that's there. a new yeah. one. And I really like listening to it. And yeah. speaking of, I'm going to share my screen and you guys can really see all of the different funny songs that are featured on the Hear Your Song YouTube channel. So, and we can also listen to one um, as the each train talks intermission. Um, <laughs> so let's just do a pretty sh a short one like that. Johnny cursing cause he can't guard Shooting hoops like a god point guard I'm a sharpshooter, I only get threes Playing against you will be a breeze Bust down Broly Avalanche I might go crazy, yeah. Bentley Coop, I'm dashing in I might go crazy, I again. run up dirty on dirty on dirty When I'm in the street 
we slice they two 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 thirty two by two hooker go fast then i step on the gas i'm only 15 with big dreams before 15 i've been trying telling like a big champ with six rings or a bumblebee with six things I, wow that was that was such a fun <laughs> song and if you love basketball you're really gonna love that it's kind of like a rap feel but also just kind of meaningful in a sense as well like just kind of working hard yeah so that's just one of the 195 songs <laughs> the lot i counted well actually i just saw on the top of the youtube the number <laughs> i don't want to lie um it's okay it's one, a reading it's a reading yeah. podcast at not a not a counting podcast so yes. you're allowed to read the number <laughs> the 195 songs are up and counting there are a lot more in the works i know and just have a listen because they're super fun and you could i I love grooving out to Sherlock is Ridiculous or Shooting Hoops or something like that. And my next question after the E-Train Talks intermission. <laughs> um, so if listeners want to access information about Hear Your Song, what are the best ways to go about learning more? Yeah, so the best way is our website, hearyoursong.org, our YouTube channel, which you just shared, which is if you just search Hear Your Song on YouTube, it will come up. And then our social media, which is where you can really like leave comments for kids and, and see sort of what's going on day by day or week by week. We've been releasing like almost a song a day this summer, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so that's at Hear Your Song HYS on social media. Um, so you can visit us there um, and learn lots about uh, what kids are creating and hear them tell their stories for themselves. Well, that's so great. And you really need to check out hearyoursong.org, everybody. It's such a special place on the internet. A lot to click on and a lot to watch. And you can also learn more through interviews that are featured on the hearyoursong.org, the Hear Your Song website. For instance, so Dan Rubens and another singer who was a volunteer, a part of the Hear Your Song program, they were interviewed on a news station. And you can learn a lot not just from my interviews, but also from a bunch of others, because there's a lot of new information and just being shared. And we we don't have like two hours to share every single <laughs> tidbit about Hear Your Song. So check out some other interviews. And because you just, I feel like this is such a topic that it's just such a wonderful topic. And I don't want you to just listen to my interview because there's more to the story than just E-Train talks. And a lot more that you can learn about. And um, my next question is, which is actually my final question. Ooh. Um, <laughs> so this is a question I ask every single one of my guests, authors, agents, publishers, kindness advocates, everybody. If you could be or meet any literary character, fictional or real, who would it be and why? This was also a really hard question. Um, I kind of looked around my bookshelves um, I don't, this also might be a question that changes every day, um, but I'm going to go with, it's sort of a three-part answer. Have you ever read The Giraffe and the Pelly and Me by Roald Dahl? I haven't, but I love so, Roald Dahl. Yeah, so I have a copy. I actually have four copies because I um, was in a used bookstore in Arizona in October, um, and I saw like a bunch of copies that were very cheap, and it's like an incredible book to share with people as like friends who are going in different directions or who are moving away. Um, it's just a book about friendship. Um, and it's about a boy named Billy who befriends a giraffe and a pelican and a monkey, and they start a window, window washing company together. Um, and so I'm going to pick the giraffe and the pelly and the monkey as people I would like as, or animals I would like as my friends. Um, a, well, they do clean windows, so that's always a helpful, helpful trait to have in your friends. B, because they sing a lot and like write songs throughout the book, which wow. for obvious reasons I'm very, uh, would be excited by. And they're just like incredible friends um, and very loyal and caring. So I would highly recommend this book. And the, now that Roald Dahl needs my, <laughs> needs my advertisements. Um, but it's, a, it's like a little known Roald Dahl. Um, and that would be my answer. Although I have so many other answers I could give because I love a lot of books. Um, what's your answer usually, or does your answer change a lot? My answer also changes a lot. And 
I've got to say, I really like answering this question with a book that's made an impact on my life, not just a literary, like, for instance, a book like Starfish by Lisa Phipps, the main, like, I'd want to meet the author, which I am this week, actually. Um, No way. That's very fun. So just, I'd want to meet any author who's willing to share their story and face, like, just face adversity head on. Because there's not really one literary character I want to meet, one fictional character, like just, I just want to meet anybody who's willing to make a difference and willing to write a story that a lot of kids need. Because there are so many different varieties of middle grade books that aren't really written about too much and need to be written about more. For instance, um, fat shaming, which was mentioned in Starfish or in like different forms of anxiety and stress because while middle grade is such a wide genre, there are so many different genres inside of the middle grade genre. There's still more that needs to be added, more that needs to be written about. And I think that just any author who wants, who's willing to share their story, who's willing to face adversity, like I said, I'd wanna meet them and just be them for a day, like live in their world of just fighting for what they believe in. And that's my answer. There's, it's so hard to pick just one character. And I know that you also, like everybody has a tough time with this question. (laughs) I love asking it. Well, I'm, yeah, sorry. And it's kind of, no, it's fine. Well, I was curious to know when you're talking about books or like topics that aren't covered a lot in middle grade, can you know any books that are about kids living with chronic illnesses or illnesses of any kind? I mean, you mentioned anxiety, but I'm curious because like when I work a lot with middle grade fiction readers um, who are living with serious illnesses too, uh, I don't. I would be cool to know some books that might relate to their experience because I don't think I've read any. One book that I really want to mention in response to your question, which rhymes, um, I love rhyming, is... Anybody here seen Frenchie by my really good friend, Leslie Connor. So the main characters, Aurora and Frenchie, they're both on opposite sides of the autism spectrum. So Frenchie is nonverbal, he never speaks, and Aurora is very verbal. And they're both kind of learning how to really just grow and kind of mature, but it's sometimes really hard. And when they found each other, like four years ago, they were like a perfect match, two complete opposites, but they say the opposites opposites attract, and that's so true, and anybody here seen Frenchie, but um, they also, they grow old together, but somewhere along the line, things are starting to change, and I think that it's just such a great novel, and it's really, it's not just one character who um, has, like, um, deals with some, um, issues every once in a while it's not just one character it's multiple it's so many they're, but they're all dealing with their own problems and they're facing them head on and while there are so many other books I could recommend Leslie Connors anybody here seen Frenchie really takes the cake all of her books really deal with health needs and special health needs and just finding yourself and working through your problems facing adversity so those are um, a couple books that I'd recommend. Um, all, so, and now that's the end of the interview. I really hope you enjoyed this chat, everybody. It's just been so enjoyable. Dan is a huge inspiration for me and so many other kindness advocates out there. And you really need to check out www.hearyoursong.org. It's a great place where you're gonna learn a lot more than I can share in this interview because there's so much more to the Hear Your Song nonprofit than just one E-Train talk. So just go there, you're gonna learn a lot. Listen to the songs, the link is in the description for the Hear Your Song YouTube channel. You're gonna have a lot of fun grooving out and just laughing to the silly fun and just downright amazing songs that all the kids have written, 195 and counting. And just thank you so much for joining me today, Dan. Thank you so much for having me, Etrin. It's been an honor to talk to you. Well, it's vice versa. I feel the <laughs> same way. It really has been an honor. Sorry if there's a garbage truck in the background. Um, it's garbage <laughs> day, and they always come on my on my most important interviews. <laughs>
And that's all, everybody. As always, stay safe, happy reading, and just keep being kind. It just if there's some way that you can share some kindness today, you, just a little goes a long way. And while maybe you can't create a hear your song nonprofit in a day, um, you can always just hold the door for somebody, be the change. Because who knows? Maybe you're there's a butterfly. There's something called the butterfly effect. And maybe one small act of kindness can really make a big difference in someone's life. And that's all. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.